Hey everybody, I'm going to do a video today on how to clean and disassemble and maintain a Hornady Lock and Load Progressive Press. The press is an auto indexing press, so it's, it's a little more complicated than some of the other presses out there. Uh, this one's very similar to a Dillon 650. Uh, it's five station press. It's got a shelf plate right there. <laughs> And uh, drive system in the main shaft or in the main hub. It's got a case activated powder drop and all the goodies and a priming system and whatnot. So, fully progressive press. We're going to tear it apart, clean it up, put it back together, show you some tips and tricks on, on some of the adjustments and that sort of thing uh, along the way. Uh, here's some of the tools we're going to need to do the job. We've got a 5 16 Allen wrench right here to take off the shell plate. We've got a 5 30 seconds here to take care of the rest of the screws on the machine. Hornady did a very good job. They only incorporated two Allen wrench sizes in the whole machine. Um, and then I've got a 3 8 ratchet with a 5 30 seconds Allen to take care of some of the tougher screws. Uh, the two on the, uh, the main ram that hold the subplate to the RAM are, are pretty tight, extremely tight, um, and you need to have them that way so that the thing doesn't come out of adjustment while you're loading. Uh, so I've got that to take care of that problem. Um, got a grease gun here, any grease gun will work. Standard, uh, standard. I use high pressure uh, grease that you can buy anywhere. Um, and then I've got, this says Lucas on it, but it's not. Uh, this is Straight up 530 Mobile One synthetic oil, best gun oil you can find. Uh, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Uh, I've loosened some of the screws to give us an advantage so it doesn't take me so long. But uh, let's go ahead and take it apart. First thing comes off, we can pull this. This is just the, uh, the finished case tray. I'm going to pull it off, set it aside. And then uh, I'm going to set the camera down here so we can have a little bit. Uh, of dexterity to take some of these parts off, but uh, let me get this camera lined up so you can see what's going on. I'm going to take the case activated powder drop off. The Hornady system is very easy. Uh, basically you just turn it about a, a sixth of a turn and then remove the, the case activated powder drop. It's got the, uh, the adapters here um, to adapt the dies to the, to the body of the press. So let's just remove that and set it aside. Um, to take the primer system apart, there's a few pieces here. There's a little piece at the top. I don't think you can see it. Um, basically the, the little guide and the actual primer tube itself uh, that sit in the explosion guard, I would call it. And we'll set those aside. The explosion guard is threaded at the bottom, so we just unscrew it. Just to direct, if you were to detonate a primer, this would direct um, the resultant explosion. Uh, if the entire primer tube were to go up, it would just direct it up towards the ceiling instead of into you. So I'll set that aside. Um, let's, let's move the camera a little bit to show you this primer system. So this is the uh, right side of the press in the back. And to disassemble the primer, system. We can remove this little spring that runs the primer shuttle and just slip it off there and raise the, the sub plate and remove the spring. We'll set it aside. Try not to crush it here. No, it'll be fine where it is. We'll catch it in a minute. Um, I've loosened this screw. There's a, there's a screw holding this cast piece down, the, the primer guide. And remove that screw, remove the primer guide itself, this piece. Uh, there's nothing really uh, complex about that. And the primer shuttle itself is right here. That just slips out next. This happens to be the small primer shuttle. It comes with both large and small. Um, to fully disassemble the priming system, we'll remove the priming plunger, which is under the shell, under the subplate. So the parts are, this is the subplate here with the arms that extend off of it. This is the main ram, and 
This is the shell plate, individual to caliber. This is a spent primer tube right here. This piece is the, uh, the rod that activates the primer shuttle. So the primer shuttle will ride on that rod as it, as it goes up with the subplate and actually it goes out and picks up a new primer. Um, so I've actually loosened this. This takes a 7 16 wrench or I believe it's an 11 millimeter. Um, but go ahead and loosen that guy up and remove it. pretty greasy. I keep every like I said I I keep everything maintained here by just putting grease on all the contact surfaces. So this this primer plunger actually contacts the frame of the unit down here, so I keep a little grease on that. Um, just to make everything last a little bit longer. So now the primer system is a, is taken apart. Um, one piece I am missing is the spring. The spring is right here. So this is what uh, returns the shuttle once it's picked up a new primer. So that's been disassembled. I'm going to go ahead and take this primer system guide activating rod off the unit. So that's just a single screw. And then it pops loose. It's just a piece of plastic at the top and a rod. We'll set it aside. Now to get the shell plate off of the subplate, there is one screw, a large screw. This is what takes the 530, excuse me, 516 Allen wrench which I have right over here. So uh, to give yourself a little bit of leverage on this, what I tend to do is I raise the ram until the shell plate is indexed over top of the spent primer hole. And I use my other Allen wrench, the 5 seconds Allen wrench. I stick the end of it in the spent primer hole and let it rest on the shell plate. That's going to react the torque. And then I take the 5 sixteenths Allen wrench, go ahead and get it hooked up here, and then loosen it. I'm going to take the other Allen wrench out, set them both down. And now I have a loose bolt, loose screw. Go ahead and remove that. Set it aside. Now my shell plate is loose. It just comes up off the drive hub. So here's the shell plate. This happens to be a 40 caliber 10 millimeter shell plate. Um, you'll notice I keep it lubed on the bottom. Uh, these two detent balls need a little lubrication. They're what align the shell plate with the dies so that when you index the ram and, and raise it up the, the, sh the brass actually enters the dies correctly and keeps everything lined up. So that's very important, keep a little bit of lube on those and keep them free of debris so that they can move freely. And then keep this system, because this actually contacts the subplate as it rotates, so keep that lubricated as well. We're going to set that aside. This is the spring. There's a, a large coil spring that that holds uh, the shells in the shell plate as it, as it indexes around. Um, this differs on different presses, but this is the retention method that Hornady uses. It's actually pretty slick. You can crush these things once in a while, so you got to be a little bit careful with this. You don't want to stretch it. You don't want to crush it. Um, having some of these extra is actually pretty handy, too. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next step in disassembling this thing is actually going to be to remove this, the subplate. So we're going to take the subplate off the ram, and the reason I do that is because I want to get the drive hub, which is in here. I'm going to move the camera so you can see it. The drive hub in the center of the subplate right there uh, is a critical wear piece, and that needs plenty of lube. Uh, as I found out in the first thousand rounds or so of this press in operation, I actually did not lube that when I first got the press, and it galled and failed. Um, in that it got undersized. And when it gets undersized, the shell plate, which it bolts directly to, is allowed to wobble on the subplate and it loses control of the rounds. And you end up with variations in overall length. You end up with variations in crimp. You also end up with shells that tip and wobble and to the point where they won't enter the sizing die correctly up here. So you'll get 
cases that hang up going into the sizing die and it gets very frustrating. Um, so I, I measured, did some measurements and found that that thing was about five thousandths undersized after about a thousand rounds of no lube operation. Um, sent it, well, called Hornady and they replaced it free of charge and it's worked flawlessly ever since. Um, that's been about 35,000 rounds now. So this, if you keep this thing lubed, it'll live a long, healthy life. So let's go ahead and take that subplate off. I use some tricks here. So what I do to, to allow me to take the subplate off is I raise it up and I use something. Um, a 2x4 on end would work. Uh, in this case, just a cardboard box to hold the subplate up off the, up off the bottom of the press so that I can access the screws. And here's where I use the uh, the 3 8 driver with an Allen attachment. Because these are pretty tight. Or were, I already loosened them. But these guys are very tight. So there's a bolt right under here. So go ahead and take that guy out. And there's one 180 degree, 80 degrees opposite yet on the other side of the press right over here. And these are what keep the subplate and the main ram in proximity to each other. If these bolts get loose, you'll end up with the subplate walking around and wandering and you'll end up with the same problems you'd have if you fail to drive huddle. You end up with variation in overall length, you end up with problems of crimp, you end up with problems uh, not being able to index correctly and get the brass lined up with the sizing die. So these two bolts are very critical to maintain Make sure they're very tight. And we'll go over them again when we assemble the press. There's a trick to reassembling this. Uh, so I'll let you look. These are very short and they're tapered, sort of like a lug nut. And they're tapered to force that alignment to occur between the subplate and the ram. So we'll set those aside. As soon as I've got those out, I'm going to have a subplate that is loose and able to flop around on the ram. The only thing that's going to keep it on the press is the spent primer rod that runs down through the main body of the press. I won't be able to completely take the subplate off the press, but then again I don't need to. I'm just going to clean it up and re-grease and reassemble. It's good to wipe this thing off. I tend to use just paper towels because it's all grease, like I said, and it's going to stay with any rag you want to use. Um, so I try not to waste my rags. I just use some paper towels and clean this thing off. It gets full of brass chunks and powder and old grease and whatnot. So. All right, now to get this thing apart, I'll have to jiggle the subplate and ram at the same time. Uh, so you can see the subplate now walks around. It's free to move. So I'm going to go ahead and try to jiggle it up and get it to disengage. There we go. So now it's off the ram. I'm going to lower the ram all the way down and reprop this so we can see what's going on. Go ahead and prop the subplate there. So let's look down here. So now I've got the main ram free from the subplate. And you can see the drive hub, which actually attaches to the drive shaft, which runs down through the main, the main shaft there. Um, so that drive hub right here is what gave me problems from the get-go. So to remove it, you just lift it up. It's just pin it's not even pinned on there. It's just free to float. It does have a keyway on it, which is what actually drives the drive hub. I don't know if you can see it down in there. Sure you can. There's a keyway right there. So this is the guy you need to keep maintained and clean and well lubricated. So let's go ahead and wipe it down. So the drive hub has a keyed adapter at the top, and that mates up with the shell plate and drives the shell plate. See right here, there's the associated slot. These two fit together as such and bolt together. 
So you definitely don't want this surface to get worn and walk around inside the main shaft. Or excuse me, it's actually piloted inside the sub the subplate right here. So we want to keep those two surfaces very clean and lubricated. Okay, that thing is clean. I'm going to clean the shell plate. The bottom side of the shell plate is fairly disgusting. This thing's had about 10,000 rounds through it since the last time I did this. So it's probably a good time to do it. I'm going to go on a bulk loading session in the near future. Uh, try to get a few thousand knocked out, so now's a good time to take care of some of these issues. Alright, shell plate is clean. Drive hub is clean. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the excess grease off the main ram. You probably can't see this behind that box. I'm going to take care of that. So the grease, when you do grease the unit, will accumulate on both ends of the main ram. It will accumulate outside of the joints on the handle, which is all fine. It does accumulate uh, spent powder and brass shavings, which is a problem for wear. Uh, so we'll go ahead and clean up the old stuff that all out of there. As you see it's not not very clean. Try not to cut yourself on some of this sharp stuff. All right, let's get the bottom of the subplate. Inside the shelf, excuse me, the subplate. Make sure that's really clean. Don't want any particles of any hard metals or any powder residue, that sort of stuff down in there. All right. Not too much gets down inside the main ram, but we'll go ahead and wipe that out anyway. There's really no way for anything to get down in here except for grease when you're lubing it. Let's that guy off. Still a fair amount of grease down in there from the last time. Alright. Let's go ahead and wipe the bottom of the main ram off. It's got a generous coating of grease everywhere as well. Like I said, the top and the bottom of the ram will accumulate spent old grease and powder. Alright, that's looking good. Now to reassemble the top, we'll go ahead and put some lube on this. This is the drive hub again. I'm just going to take a little fresh, fresh grease. this bearing surface. Some gloves would probably be handy. Grease that bearing surface and this edge right here. Because that will get pulled up tight when you snug that bolt down on, this, on the shell plate. This will get pulled up tight. And I like to put a little bit of grease inside this hole in that keyway right there, just to prevent any type of wear. There's not a whole lot of load there, but uh, this thing does jiggle every time you move it, so go ahead and make sure there's some lube in there. And then to reassemble it, you just align this key slot with the pin that's poking out of the drive shaft. Go ahead and wiggle that down in there. All right, it's been seated. Now to reassemble this this subplate and the drive hub, 
we just have to align the two and install those two screws that I mentioned, and I'll show you how to do that. Go ahead and raise the ram up to your sub plate, and they just align themselves. Remove my block. All right, my sub plate is back on my main ram, but nothing is holding it on there. So let's go ahead and fix that problem. Let's put in one of these screws. here. Like I said, this thing is piloted and it will center the screw hole in the, in the subplate with the main ram. Tapered, I should say, not piloted. So I lightly snugged that one. I didn't put any torque on it at all. I just touched it up. And I'll do the same on this side. Alright, I'll give that one a little bit of a, a turn. Give this one a little bit of a turn, and then start getting a little more aggressive side to side here, adding some torque to these, and, going, and maintaining the handle position with my, with my body over here so that it doesn't get away from me. some final torque to those with our ratchet. Make sure you get it seated well and not strip, try not to strip the drive head. Alright, those two are very tight. I'd say probably in the order of 15 foot-pounds if not a little more. Maybe closer to 20. You don't want to strip them. But you don't want them to come, loo to come loose either. And there's so much lube in this area when the press is running that Loctite's probably going to be ineffective. And if you tried to clean it up, it'd probably be unsuccessful anyway. So I stay away from the Loctite on those. You can try it, but make sure to get it very, very clean before installing it, or you just wasted your money. Alright, so now our subplate and our main ram are stuck together again. Now let's go ahead and reassemble the priming system. I'm going to move the camera again. Show you. So here we are back at the back side of the press again. First thing I make sure to do is clean the plunger. The worst problem you're going to have is if the plunger itself stands proud of the body and it will snag, it will actually snag the bottom edge of the slide, the shuttle, and if that happens you'll end up breaking this this guide piece back here or it'll snap loose from its little cup down here uh, and cause you all sorts of headaches. So you have to make sure to keep the bottom of the plunger clean. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I make that stand proud with my thumb and then go ahead and wipe all the gunk out from under that, that head right there. And make sure it moves up and down smoothly. All right. Not really much other maintenance to do to this thing. I do give it a dab of oil from the bottom side. A trusty 530 Mobile One. that a few times to get it up in there. You don't want it swimming in oil such that it'll contaminate primers and that sort of stuff, so just a little is good. Alright, clean it up. We'll reinsert it. Let's hold the subplate up off the bottom of the press. Before I insert this, let's clean this shuttle track. So this is another area of maintenance. You want to get, keep this shuttle track clean of any debris that falls out of sized cases, or uh, you know, if, you shave, if you shave the edge of a primer, you'll get a, a small piece of metal that will gum up this work. Uh, this shuttle needs to go fully forward as close as it can get to the center of the subplate while priming so that it holds the primer in the correct orientation. So you need to make sure this area is clean right up here in the front 
so that it can nose all the way up. And here's this, the primer slide where I'd clean it, clean this front edge. And just lay it in there and see that it goes all the way forward. It looks good. Alright. Let's go ahead and reinstall our primer plunger. It just threads in and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up using a I have a 7 16 wrench here, but you could use an 11 millimeter as well. Let's snug that up. There we go. Seems to work. I'll finish this off here. Let's put the slide on. Primer slide goes in. primer slide spring, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but the, the trick here is to put the hooked end in the subplate first, there's a hole in the subplate right here, and finish the installation putting the, the closed end over the, the shank on the primer slide. So slip that through the hole, and grip it back here, extend the spring, and slip it over there. Done. Now to hold the slide down, if you don't put this piece on, the slide can just pop up free with under that spring pressure. And to hold that down, we'll reinstall this cast piece right here. It's got a, a dowel locator rod on it. The dowel is right there. The dowel goes in the hole in the, in the subplate. And then it's held on with a bolt right here. Spin that on. Torque it. Again, not too tight. A little is enough. Alright, our primer system is reassembled. Uh, to finish that off, we'll put the primer tube and the blast guard back on. The primer tube has a little complexity to it. Um, on the bottom end, there's a tiny chamfer. So it's actually a step. There's a little step right there. And that's what aligns it with the bottom edge here. I'll go ahead and align that. Make sure it seats. Looks good. Slip the blast guard over the top of it. Screw that down. And then just snug here. You don't need to get too aggressive. Snug that down, and then you can't see it, but put the, the three pronged little uh, centering apparatus there on the top. And then to finish off the the primer slide activator rod needs to be reinstalled. And there's a nice little cutout at the top of the press here to align it. So go ahead and align that with the with the top of the press. Um, the screw head will make a nice imprint on the top of this piece of plastic. So you can see how far in or out of the press you've had it aligned in the past. So go ahead and make that uh, alignment. Lock it down. This is what sets how far the shuttle goes back underneath the primer tube to pick up a new primer. If it goes too far, you'll end up jamming because the primer won't slide back under the new primers. If it doesn't go far enough, obviously it won't pick up a new primer. So that adjustment is fairly critical. And snug that down. Now you should be able to see the primer system work 